check yep okay great thanks uh, i think today we have a we had a very eye octave uh, worship right so we are all charged up to sit for next two hours right so that's the plan that is given to me to keep you all sit for next two hours <laughs> no sorry okay so uh, good morning so i hope uh, we all are you know like by this time we are aware of of the series that you are going to start uh, we'll start on a series called kingdom of uh, god and uh, we are like taking this study from based on a book written by one of our senior, senior pastors and uh, pastor stanley and uh, was written in this book and uh, going forward like you know the next couple of weeks uh, we will be studying uh, deep into uh, the kingdom of god deep diving into the kingdom of god so there are around nine chapters and uh, you will see you know each one has what is that kingdom value that we need to have and what does god want us to you know uh, learn so the first lesson today uh, we will like look at the revelation of the kingdom of god yeah so uh, basically when we talk about kingdom of god so what does uh, so we, you know if i have to say like you know in kingdom of god in uh, we know that we all uh, who is the kingdom of god who are the people in the kingdom of god any uh, like you know if we have have to say that then we say that you know people who are who believe christ who believe their faith in christ put their trust in christ right who have decided to follow christ you know uh, who have decided to honor you know christ and allow him to work in us allow him to purify us from within you know uh, i think those people right are called uh, you know we are you know, a part of that kingdom of god but today we'll see what is god's kingdom right when we talk about kingdom of god um just to start off like you know uh, there are, we can see it in 3d's so one of the like this is just uh before we go into it like the three uh, three d's are our uh, dwelling uh, dom dominion and uh, you know when we say about dwelling so what does the uh, meaning that comes to us first thing you know when we see throughout the cha you know uh, bible from right from genesis to revelation if we see that god dwells right we see god dwelling among his people we see in the, right from the garden of eden to revelation um where it speaks about a future that we would god would uh, we would dwell among you know we will be with god and his uh, angelic holds host so um, when we see the word dwelling it says the entirety of scripture from genesis to revelation could be summed up in three words that is god with us so this theme that throughout the verse it goes as god with us and uh, we see from right from garden of eden you know god being with us we see about when we talk about tabernacle god you know uh, god with us when we see jesus putting on flesh in in person you know is is uh, assuring us that you know as as it was promised that he is god with us amongst his people when he saw uh, the um, scenario of pentecost and the before the filling of the holy spirit like you know god is with us and uh, and jesus put you know uh, the new heavens and the new earth so the future even in the future right when we are uh, when we are when we will be gathered together in the heavenly uh, place you know there will be a new heaven and new earth so even there god is with us so uh, so that's why something that you know when we see about uh, god and his kingdom so that's something that we can look at as people we are those people who are rescued and and we are put on a solid ground right um we are not just been rescued for uh, some silly purpose are we anyone you know differs from that we are not rescued for a silly purpose we are rescued with a great purpose right we are rescued we are cleansed we have been picked up from the miry clay we are cleansed and put on the solid ground so that we proclaim his praises we proclaim his kingdom right so that's our part 
you know, in the kingdom of God. So, um, so we are supposed to domain. We have we are supposed to have dominion of what God has created, right? In where we see in Genesis, right in the first chapter, that God made Adam and Eve in His, you know, uh, in in His image, in their image, and then He asked them to rule the land, right? He asked to rule. Did He ask just to rule for Himself, or He asked to even you know rule everything that is there on on the, under the sky, right? The beast of the field, uh, the birds of the air, everything He was given. He was asked, said to you know subdue and to have a dominion, but God. He is the supreme. He 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 has the, uh, you know, he is the one who created the universe. He is the one who created the entire earth, and we are, you know, as rescued people, we are supposed to have this dominion in a good sense, not in a sense where we impact um, on this earth, but we create an impact on a positive note. We we give good intent even as we have this dominion. Also, uh, when we see talk about kingdom of God, we see that you know we are invited, we are adopted, uh, we are grafted into the eternal dynasty of King Jesus. Right? We are not just um, people who are left alone, but we have been adopted. That's why we call like you know Father God. The song is there. You know, we have been adopted into your family, and the kingdom of God is inviting people. The King invites. People who can hear have here to listen, eyes to see, to believe, and uh, you know heart of faith to take this step, right? To follow Him. So we need to put the armor of God against every temptations of this age. So one of the greatest thing or biggest thing that we have is, like you know, in this while even as we, as people of God, uh, you know, we we are uh, rescued, we are set aside. But then we have temptations in this world, right? We have trials and temptations in this world, and that's where we all try to, you know, uh, we juggle, we we fumble, uh, we fall down. But the word of God says, you know, a righteous man, even though he falls, uh, you know, seven times, he will rise up again and walk on the right path. He will not give up. So, but that's 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 the uh, facility or. Or the uh, grace that God has given to us, His children. Right? We are called to live good news, uh, to live a good news of the gospel of the kingdom. Now, what is the good news of the gospel of the kingdom? You know, so that's something we'll dig dig in uh, as we go forward. So to start with the revelation. So these are the few revelations that we can you know uh, see that God. Revealed His word. God revealed His Son. Uh, Jesus came in flesh and blood. Um, he came for our sins. He came to uh, rescue us. He came to, um, you know, again graft into His family. You know, so because of sin, we the we all were lost. But as we see uh, through the life of Christ, that we are again brought into His kingdom, and that's the privilege that we. Have it's not a normal privilege, right? Normally, when we go to some meetings uh, and when we have this, say uh, the chief minister comes to a meeting, what will happen? We'll have the everything, uh, the decorum and the area will be clean. The you know snipers, what all, who all will be you know securing the location, right? But our God, who is the living God, has come, has left the heaven, came down for us. So that we can, you know, uh, be adopted into his family. So in John three three, uh, we see Doctor Nicodemus, uh, the lawyer, actually. So uh, Jesus said to Nicodemus, he says, "Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God." For many years, one understood that the kingdom of God was equated to kingdom of heaven, and it was considered equivalent to heaven. Hence, the purpose of being born again was understood to be to go to heaven. So they had this, you know. Uh, so some people had some misunderstandings, and and if we think that you know that uh, being born again is just to go to heaven, 
then there are a few questions that we need to you know analyze look at before just concluding that born again means going to heaven right this reduces the extent of the kingdom of god to only one aspect of the whole truth so when we are saying like yes are we not if you are born again are we not going to heaven we will that's fact but there's only one part of the truth right we will have to understand the whole truth what it is so there are some issues remain unresolved okay if one is born again just go to heaven then what is the purpose of being on earth right if we are if we just have to be you know born again and we know that you know just be become born again and you are going to heaven so the, what is the purpose what is the purpose that we have on this earth what does one do about so many instructions in the bible about life on earth like instructions given to husband and wives you know uh, husbands you know love your wives love wives submit to your husbands employer employees you know treat them uh, properly correctly parents children guide them train them up in the ways that they should go and that when they are at of age that they can follow all the commandments of the lord you know about society church you know how to behave what is the role that we have so this this you know questions are there which we can you know we we'll think about then what is the use of spiritual gifts that we talk so much about like the you know operating in the spiritual gifts prophetics teachings you know what is the use of them if just being born again is meaning to going to heaven then if you put a curtain there saying nothing more i want i am born again i am going to heaven you know so that's not the case what is the idea of cultivating the fruit of the spirit then so much importance is given to cultivate so that we became so that we become more like christ so that we reflect the glory of christ in our life in our daily walk so what is the use of it right if everything on earth is bad and it's getting worse one must abandon earth as quickly as one can right if we think that is so bad then we should you know abandon we'll be, uh, i'm why to stay also here we know that there's so much sin so much trouble so much fight so much you know uh, persecution why to stay do something and go <laughs> go up right then what does one do with the statement when jesus said that let your kingdom come let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven how do we respond to that right if going if going to heaven was the only goal then one should abandon all church activities and conduct only gospel meetings so that you know some people will be saved they will be born again and they will also go to heaven is that the thing so there are these are the issues which are unresolved so you know if we only talk about born again and and born again means kingdom of heaven and we will go to heaven uh, that's not what it is so in the in today's world when we look uh, at today's world even the follower of jesus right i think that follower of jesus even we fall into those bracket at at times even the follower of jesus uh, we regard the world as a sinking ship how many of us think the world as a sinking ship somewhere or other we agree that the earth is going to be destroyed and it's like a sinking ship yeah we always talk about negatively right negativity like there is the world has no hope to give it is a hopeless situation we are in it is so corrupted i think it's better for god to come soon as as soon as possible we think of this world as a sinking ship so we think that we jump on a lifeboat you know like the church and come to the meeting and uh, you know uh, have some few people convinced and all of us can you know go to heaven so it's it's, it's not you know uh, even that right even uh, the world will going to hand the, there'll be or this uh, you know the lord on the day of his second coming he will come and there will be a eternal uh, you know uh, destruction but god promises that we will he will take us to a new heaven and a new earth so there's always a challenge when we say kingdom of god then there is also a kingdom of satan right 
but kingdom of God does not only comprise of going to heaven. There is something that you know, kingdom of God. When we talk about kingdom of God, it also implies or you know, it infers a government of God on heaven and on earth. Right? The Psalms uh, says in twenty four one, the planet Earth belongs to the Lord. David has this revelation, and he writes there, like the the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and those who dwell in in it but the world was invaded by satan the devil who wanted the portion you know uh, to occupy to to you know uh, take away of what god has creation and god created and thereby the corruption crept in and so forth polluting the world system that god had created the minds of the people have been blinded so Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, in their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. But that is not the final story, right? Jesus came to uh, defeat Satan. He defeated on while as he fulfilled the promise that he went on to the cross. He died on the cross for our sake. But now our responsibility in that as redeemed children or, or as called out children is to partner and participate in extension of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So that God's will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven, done in heaven. So far with me? So kingdom of God has a government, he has certain department, like just like we have corporate, we have the CEO, CFO, HR, you know, all different functions, so that the running of a company is smooth, right? Even if one company fails to do its role or perform its part, then the company as a whole fails, right? So here we see that in this kingdom of God, there was some malfunction that happened right there's some uh, corruption took place there's some you know um, breakup that that uh, happened why when we see that the moment adam the man ate the fruit that are of knowledge of truth right uh, he sinned he fall fell short he failed on his part to handle the department and due to which you know, they were Adam and Eve, both the man and the woman were thrown out of uh, Garden of Eden, right? They were put out. They didn't have no, they didn't, uh, they no more had access to the Garden of Eden. They had to toil, they have to toil for their work and they have to toil for their food. You know, uh, so it's very important that we understand this. Uh, that what God did for us, he sent his son, Jesus. So this, uh, the word kingdom is translated from the Greek word uh, basilia. The word denoted sovereignty, power, dominion, a territory, subject to a king, right? A king and a kingdom, a boss and his company, right? A CEO and his company, like to say or as simple as it, a shopkeeper who has a Kirana shop, right? He is the owner. So if he has to keep it rolling, he has to, he need to have the right things in his shop so that people come and, you know, the rolling happens. The work keeps happening in the right way. So we have a king, a god, and in his, it is the rule of a sovereign who is actually alive and present at the center of all that is his it has therefore two aspects one realm and the other one is rule so i think uh, yeah so realm it is a territory of two dominion over which god sorry i'm moving too much so realm it is the territory of uh, to the dominion over which god's government is exercised is the is is the uh, you know the heaven earth people and everything in it is in the universe is is under god's territory 
rule it is the activity of ruling or governing it refers to the quality of his rule his values his moral character so kingdom of god shows what god does as well as shows us the area over which god does it so there's a realm and there's a rule and everything under the universe is his he reigns and he rules so there are few terminologies when we talk about uh, the kingdom uh, kingdom of god so there are some few uh, terminologies which are used interchangeably right but they all mean the same so kingdom of this uh, in matthew 1923 we can see is mentioned as kingdom of heaven speaking of the source not of this world like it is difficult for a rich you um, know uh, jesus tells that you know it is difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven he is speaking of the source and which is not of this world like uh, so it's very diff like what how can we put it as you know uh, so why did god uh, why why is it saying that you know it's, it's difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven so any any ideas thoughts sorry got it heart okay so where our money is where there is a heart so something like that sometimes we are very we are very self sufficient we don't need god right so is when we have everything around when everything is going good you know uh, we don't need we don't need the feel of having god it's only when we start uh, facing situations or circumstances we require god and we run to god saying god we need help but yeah here coming back to the kingdom of god you know terminology so uh, we see in matthew 19 you know uh, Matthew uses the kingdom of the word kingdom of heaven. He does not use the kingdom of God. We will see it in some time. So, kingdom of God, Romans fourteen seven, uh, where God is uh, like you no know, God is the center of everything and His character. Right here, the matter is not about eating and drinking. Like when we read Romans fourteen seventeen, so it mentions about eating and drinking, but is uh, but it's not that. You know, the main essence of the word kingdom of God here is. um but of his of righteousness peace and joy and the holy spirit you know the center of his, of this kingdom of god uh, of this kingdom is god and the center of this kingdom is his character which is being displayed across so when we see throughout the um, you know the the new testament we see that it all mentions about the kingdom of god jesus you know there are around uh, most of the parables that jesus spoke are relating to you know uh, kingdom of god so there's another terminology uh, other terminologies as well uh, like kingdom of son of man uh, kingdom of jesus the kingdom of christ and god the kingdom of son he loves etc but all of these are used interchangeably and they mean the same thing right the kingdom of god so the reason i was saying right in matthew uh, why does god uh, why does luke uh, matthew use the word kingdom of heaven and not of god so when the matthew was written you know uh, he spoke to the jewish people and they don't have uh, you know this they don't take the name of god yahweh directly so they use the alternate word the nearest word so the kingdom of heaven was the nearest word so when we read the gospel of matthew we'll see kingdom of heaven and when we read the other gospels we'll see is written a address as kingdom of god so that's the only difference when we see in luke and matthew you know uh, even in for the beatitudes we see that luke uses the word uh, god versus matthew refers it to as heaven so kingdom of god versus kingdom of heaven is one of the same some people here have erroneously uh, concluded that the kingdom of heaven is heaven itself from the, the term kingdom of heaven hence they wrongly conclude 
that the starting point for man to experience kingdom is somewhere in the future, not now. Right? Uh, they think that kingdom of heaven is like something when someone will like you know when we will die and God will come and you know in a second after the second coming he will take us all we will be in a heaven. So they literally take that meaning, but that is not the you know is is a mistake of of the understanding right so it's wrong to think that kingdom of heaven is heaven itself they think it's a future activity they don't think is the present similarly some people misinterpret jesus statement in john 18 6, uh, 1836 uh, it says that my kingdom is not of this world right? my kingdom is not of this world that infers that it has not started as yet but what it actually meant you know uh, what it actually meant is that his authority was not given to him by an agency right like in our in our offices uh, we are like we grow step by step right we are associates then we are team leads we are managers we are senior managers um, then we we become the what ad's and uh, svps right directors each level has a responsibility so and and we have been assigned with that responsibility with some power so but here in the case of jesus it's not that right that's why he says that you know, um, you know jesus uh, you know he says in 18 john 18 36 that my kingdom is not of this world it doesn't mean that someone has to you know at that moment he was not given the authority it's not that, right? His authority is from above. He has come with his source of authority is outside of this world. It's not inside of this world. It's not like in the offices that we have. You know, we when we grow, you know, we are being given some authority. So we also can think like you know some people who are assigned to us, our team members, like they are like we can have dominion over them. We have the power over them. You know, whatever they say, we have to, you know, they have to do. <laughs> it's not like that, right? So here God, uh, Jesus, came with his authority uh, from above. No one had to actually give him, right? He just said that because it was not the time for him to say. So he, he says to those people there and say, says that it is, uh, my kingdom is not of this world. Right? And they wrongly conclude that the starting point for man to experience kingdom is somewhere in the future that is when we get to heaven so they can only experience later or in the future okay so there's the timeline uh, that we look at time element in matthew 4 17 um, it says kingdom is about to start here Jesus said in his, uh, you know, this was his first message where uh, he mentions like repent for the kingdom of uh, kingdom is at hand. So there's a time element that we're talking about, like, you know, there's a first message that Jesus gave. And uh, when he speaks about in, in the Matthew, Gospel of Matthew. Second, we see uh, the kingdom has already come. When people were thinking that, uh, you know, God will come, he, is some, he will come, the king will come and will rule and reign, will take his people, save his people. Uh, here Jesus was already addressing them, you know, the kingdom repent for even I think even in the John we see that John and Jesus were uh, preaching around, going around saying repent for the kingdom of kingdom is at hand. And the second is the kingdom has already begun. So Matthew 12, 28 says, but if it is by the spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has already come upon you. So it means we already started. If, if the spirit of the demon is cast it out and the spirit of God has filled us, you know, the kingdom has already begun. So that's the second element that we look at. And the kingdom will come. This is uh, Matthew 6, 10. It says, you know, it speaks about when he will come, he will take, you know, set everything right. He will, uh, you know, um, do everything right. So that's talking about a future element. So we see like three elements of, you know, if you're in the timeline, that kingdom about to come, kingdom already begun, 
and kingdom will come in our future sins. So this confusion uh, can be best resolved by comparing it with World War II. They say that you know on the on the D-Day, the Allied forces launched a combined attack on German and the Nazi forces. From that day, the backbone of the Nazi and the German armies forces were broken, and the war began to progress in favor of the Allied forces. But it took for uh, it you know, but it took quite a few months before the victory day was declared by them. And uh, only then, you know, after a few months, um, the World War was seized, World War II ceased, when the Allied forces came together and they attacked. But here in, in, in the context to Kingdom of God, when Jesus came to destroy the works of Satan, he was beginning the destruction of the devil one, of the evil one. Eventually, the Kingdom of God will be established when Jesus comes back, when we would see a great finale of the destruction of the enemy. And then we know that the kingdom of this world will become the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So when he comes back, you know, when he has already done, he has, the work has already started, but when he comes again, he will, the, the entire universe, the entire world will be free of this enemy. He has come, he has come and given the first jetka. He has defeated Satan on the cross. Right? Uh, now he will come again to, for once and for all to clear the matter, right? to settle the matter. The kingdom of God is hidden uh, reality behind, uh, the kingdom of God is the hidden reality behind all world history. World history can only be explained well when we have the underguarding truth about the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God is the hidden reality behind all world history, shaping it and molding it, eventually to its own end. It will bring to an end. Right? And the kingdom of God is the central theme of the Bible and the key to all human history. So without, if we need some reference, you know, we need to go back whose kingdom it is, who, who's ruling it, right? Who is handling the universe? Who is handling everything that, who is looking, watching over, right? Who is overseeing everything? So by this time, uh, I think so we understand that the kingdom of God, it is good for us to see, you know, the overview of how kingdom of God has progressed. So there are a few, you know, pointers that we can uh, we'll look at now. So first one, kingdom ruler. So if there's a king, there's a ruler, right? There's a kingdom, then there's a ruler. We know still we have very few little uh, countries where the kingdom rule is on, right? In Saudi and few places. But in other places, the kingdom rule is gone. There's a president, there's a vice president, and so and so forth, right? So we have, but a kingdom ruler, who is the ruler? A God is the supreme ruler, right? First Chronicles 29, verse, uh, chapter 29, verse 10 to 12. David praises, praises the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly. O Lord, the God of our ancestor, ancestor Israel, may you be praised forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on the, on the earth is yours. O oh Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. Wealth and honor come from you alone, for you rule over everything. Power and might are in your hand, and at your discretion, people are made great and given strength. Psalm 103, verse 19 says, The Lord has made the heavens his throne. And from there, he rules over everything. A kingdom ruler, right? He is a God. He's a supreme ruler of his, of his kingdom. Do, as part 
of being his king uh, you know as part of being his people in his kingdom we have a role to play as well right the second point is kingdom agents you and i are the kingdom agents god is the supreme ruler and he delegated his authority to man to rule on his behalf right genesis verse 1 uh, chapter 1 verse 26 says god said let let us make man in our image and let them rule so it's isn't it such a privilege to display and execute and implement the plans of god in our life when god has given us this authority is our responsibility is is a privilege for us to display his and execute and implement his plans some said was 4 to 6 says you made man crowned him with glory and honor made him ruler over the works of your hands and put everything under his feet as all of us are crowned with glory and honor but sometimes we look at ourselves as somebody uh, you know insignificant right insignificant we can see ourselves uh, as useless not worthy to be part of or out of place we find ourselves what people say about us starts affecting us slowly but sami says that you know god has crowned us with his glory with his honor with his power and put everything what he created under our feet he has given us authority we need to reflect this glory of god reflect the honor of god and god has made us ruler over everything he has created if we are if we give into this you know uh, matters which of who is thinking what who is looking down on me who is biting my back you know who is treating me wrong who is treating me right we shift a focus our focus is not on what actually should be our assurance or our worth is not on what people say is on what the word of god says and psalms in yes beautifully captured it you know he crowned us with his glory and honor made him and yes made us ruler of this of the works of his hands whatever he has created so beautifully so marvelously yes given us dominion over them when we look at uh, the astronauts right they still are discovering so many new things and you know they try to articulate so much man cannot comprehend everything at one one go you know little by little little by little but even to discover that god has to allow to you know it to be revealed so we see you know the revelation of the kingdom of god that god is the ruler and he reveals according to his will some may have great good revelation some may have little revelation but is based on our walk with him you know he reveals to us we might have all the knowledge uh, you know which is available on the internet but it will not make sense unless the revelation is given to us unless god gives us the revelation it will not make sense it will not be useful to us it will just be a knowledge which will puff up third one kingdom mandate so god supreme ruler we are his agents in this world and we have a mandate what is the mandate we have brothers and sisters god has made man for rulership right uh, rule well to steward well in his kingdom so he has made the universe he has his kingdom set he has said that he is a supreme 
He has made us. He has given us dominion over everything that He has created. But right, that's our role. And that we do well. We steward well. Whatever role has been given, whatever has been asked of you, you know, do it in the best possible way. Present it in the best possible way. Genesis one twenty eight. God gave the mandate to rule, to subdue, and to have dominion over the earth, a godly dominion, not a earthly dominion, not like how the world will think. You know, to grow, one will trample or do something to our, you know, colleagues, and then we want to grow up the ladder. No, He doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to have a godly dominion. God gives us the same mandate today in Matthew twenty eight nineteen twenty. He says, "Go and make disciples of all nations." It is a kind of the same thing God is reiterating in New Testament to us. You know, in Old Testament, He gave it to, you know, He said then that to subdue and have dominion of over the earth. Here, Jesus comes. He tells us, "Go and make disciples of all nations." In the Gospel of Matthew, we see that, right? That's the mandate given to us, and it's kind of the same. Thing that you know in a different form is is to us in the current generation, right? Is the New Testament that we have this mandate to go and make disciples of all nations. Fourth one, kingdom scope. This speaks about you know who are eligible, who are not eligible, uh, who are from back you know OBC, SC, XT, whatever C, and you know it speaks. Uh, But the kingdom scope is for each and everybody. It doesn't matter which C we belong to, right? Which caste, creed, or tribe we belong to, it doesn't at all matter. The kingdom is open for all. He is inviting everybody. Anyone who hears his gospel and comes into his kingdom is part of his kingdom, right? The scope is extended to everyone who believes in him. It is extended to. It is not just extended to few people. Who are religious? Who carry certain uh, belief systems? No, it's for everybody. God's kingdom does not merely cover the spiritual realm, but it covers every realm pertaining to life. But to you know, but to be part of that, you know, saying that uh, it also says that in Deuteronomy twenty-eight one to fourteen, it says that you know, obedience is the key to the kingdom. In the kingdom of God, obedience takes the precedence. First, we have to obey God, even as we, you know, uh, we come to His kingdom once we obey His uh, His 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 message, right? His gospel. So um, that's the first obedience that act that we take. You know, at least declaring that you are our Lord, you are our Savior. So Deuteronomy one to fourteen has it speaks about blessings. It it speaks about You know blessings based on obedience, uh, and every sphere that will you know uh, will experience is blessing through obedience. We will experience the blessing in the following areas: agriculture, financial, political, business, material, travel, livestock, employment, weather, leadership, spiritual blessing. Spiritual blessing you will be like a blessing that you will be made holy. Now, fame and honor is not the fame that you know we get in the world, but uh, fame and honor, you know, is to be called people of God. That's the fame and honor. People know by His name that we are His people, His chosen generation, His kingdom generation, right? Our church. So, you know, our fame and honor is not on things how we do, how we perform, but. Based on his calling, his work in our life. It also speaks of us educational blessing. I I think something you know when I was reading through it, uh, uh, some on you know some documents, uh, I thought very interesting educational blessing. I've never heard about it, and um, but it says here that it's not for us, but it says that you know. Uh, Final educational blessing where we will be teaching our children diligently the ways of God. So, if we see all these aspects, it under it underlines the fact that in Deuteronomy twenty eight, kingdom of God is across all areas of life, 
we cannot say that you know it's only a spiritual aspect it pushes into a physical uh, physical aspect as well right all spheres all realm that's what we say uh, saw while in the uh, definition realm and rule right that's where we can link back to if it's connecting dots right we can see his blessing in all areas but if he is says like you know as we say that if he is not of if he is not lord of all then he is not lord at all so we have might have heard lot of times right it's very true if he is not lord of every area of uh, life then he is not lord at all he cannot be lord only on compartments he is god he is supreme right so kingdom influence covers every sphere of person's life yeah so there's a uh, other thing called as kingdom lost you know we'll see uh, through the pattern of past and the present situations it says that kingdom was lost first man doubted the plans of god now god created this beautiful uh, earth universe he created the garden of eden he created man and woman and he said you can do anything you can eat anything of anything but not of this tree of life but what happened when the serpent came and you know he he doubted he, he acted as if he doubted as if he was he gave into the temptation that serpent brought in right that nothing will happen god is lying to you if you eat this fruit nothing like is just a fruit he doesn't want you to know everything that's why he said not to eat you know that's how the kingdom was lost but we have jesus who has come and restored it but he set it at right on the cross amen kingdom ruin man ate the fruit from the tree of good and evil so god set a kingdom he had a garden and the man was placed but he through his doubt through his disobedience he ate the fruit and the kingdom was ruined that's why they were thrown out they were kept out and you know no one is given the access kingdom a spurred satan took over the dominion how do how does it happen right how come so craftily he came he deceived the man and and took over the dominion that god gave man he took it over here you know so what are the areas that we are you know giving dominion over to satan god has given us the dominion but we are giving are we being fooled are we being straight away next kingdom redeemed christ defeated satan on the cross you know the christ redeemed us right by defeating satan on the cross through his cross through this death we have life through his death we have a new beginning kingdom power and authority with god here like we see that you know jesus has all power and authority so what was lost jesus came and is setting it back he has set back right and as part of his thing knowing all this what's our role we are next if we see that you know a kingdom embassy and ambassadors now what's an embassy embassy is the church they are houses right our homes and ambassadors we are the ambassadors of christ we are carrying his name we are carrying his rule you know his authority he has called us as followers of christ we are his ambassadors kingdom restoration christ has you know uh, he came to earth he started the work 
first you know he gave a lower hook on the cross to satan defeated death defeated sin you know and is come to restoration but there's a time that we all the entire universe will be restored but we need to be those people as well you know wherever we go whatever we do uh, we should be people who will who will restore his kingdom yeah how can we do that by giving the good uh, gospel by sharing the gospel to people around us by sharing you know taking his authoritative uh, you know power of healing power, power of you know using the spiritual gifts that god has given us you know, to heal by healing right so people heal jesus went around village to village town to town and he healed he healed the blind who was born from uh, born blind he healed uh, he raised lazarus who was four days old dead he did miracle upon miracle and he restored kingdom warfare everyone is under attack today you know everyone is under attack in sense we have our doubts we have our you know differences even today you know we have so many people sharing like trust god you know it's just a matter of some was sharing i think it's just a matter of prayer and you know worship so you know that we will be we can overcome this warfare a uh, daily quiet time with god you uh, know um, getting discipleship with you know pastor and elders will help us all these are ways to set to help us to win warfare the holy spirit is given to us that we might you know uh, be victorious we might not give in to the to the daily temptations you know the desires of this flesh the desires of you know everything that is there in the world so beautiful and attractive right so we are in warfare you accept it or not we are right as we know but god has jesus has made us you know redeemed us so through jesus we are redeemed through jesus we are set apart it talks about kingdom victory god is seated on the throne and he rules from this throne god's throne is untouchable his authority cannot be successfully challenged there is only one throne that throne belongs to our god only it doesn't belong to anybody in this universe in this under this sky there is only one throne and that belongs to god psalm 73 1 and 2 says the lord reigns he is robed in majesty the lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength indeed the world is established firm and secure your throne was established long ago you are from all eternity god's throne is unaffected by events of the, on this earth whatever happens on this earth you know uh, god's throne is not affected recently we have seen uh, the wave of covid right two years uh, or there was a space where we were completely locked completely in our houses in the wall of our houses it doesn't affect god's throne it doesn't affect his kingdom because he is in control he reigns he reigns in majesty so to if you look at the revelation you know what god is doing in his kingdom he says that in the coming of jesus he has dealt a death blow to satan on the cross the kingdom has come but from then on the church is energized by the holy spirit to do the mopping up operations you know the church is energized the church is is the active agent in this world to do the mopping operations to culminate in the victory day celebration which are which is going to happen when the enemy will be eliminated once and for all then according to revelation 11:15 the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our lord and it will become in you know, a day near future 
So something that we can uh, look at is questions, a few questions that we can, you know, uh, look at based on today's time on message. Is Jesus only a savior or is he also a king over your life? Are any areas in your life out of his kingship? Is he really the boss of everything? Which area are you seeking for a breakthrough this morning? What are you fighting for? What are you fighting for? What are our fights? What are we struggling for? What is the one thing in your life which is outside God's ways? You know, something that we can introspect, ponder upon, discuss, seek help in prayer. We all are going through it. We, you know, praise to be God if no one is, you know, if somebody is not going through any of it. Glory to God. But if we are and we acknowledge His Lordship, you know, over every sphere, every area of our life, if He is the boss of our life, then there will be a difference, you know. So let's recommit everything to His Lordship. Right? Knowing that the kingdom is his, he is the supreme leader. He is the authority over everything under the sky and above the sky as well. Uh, with this, I stop here about the revelation of the kingdom of God. Uh, there's so much to speak about, uh, and but I think in the interest of time, <laughs> I'll stop here. I'll ask Bayar to uh, Avanki to come and pray. Thank you.